Hi, my name is Laura McLean, and this is the introductory video for the Biology 141-142 Laboratories. Today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about how to use this binocular compound microscope. It's called binocular compound microscope for two reasons. First, um, there are two eyepieces or ocular lenses, hence why it's called binocular. And also it's compound because there are two sets of lenses. There are the ocular lenses, as well as these sets of lenses below called the objective lenses. Um, so one thing I want to tell you about before I actually get into how to use the microscope is the handling of the microscope. So when you go to pick these guys up or move them around your bench, what you want to do is you want to pick it up by this back arm piece and then support the base with your left hand. Um, what we want to try to avoid is actually um, dragging the microscope across the lab bench. If you do do this, what's going to happen is that you're going to dislodge the lenses within this ocular, the ocular region and as well as within this objective region. Now we're going to go through the different parts of the microscope. So starting at the top, these two guys right here, which I've already mentioned, are the two ocular lenses. Moving on down from there, you have um, this revolving nose piece, which contains three different um, optical lenses. Um, you have a 4X, which is your smallest, the 10X, and then the 40X. The nose piece is attached to right here what we call as the arm of the microscope. Underneath all the lenses is this platform area which you put your slide on, which is called the stage. And you can sit, once you put your slide down in here, there's this thing called the stage clip which will hold it in place. You can move the slide by revolving this knob right here, which will move your slide backwards and forwards, um, and then right to left. Underneath the nose piece, you have the condenser lens. Um, and then you have this rotating um, little guy, which is called the revolving turret, which you use for phase contrast microscopy, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, down here, you have the light source. And you turn this light source on by your on-off switch, which is located down at the very bottom. Also, there is a, a sliding um, little piece that will adjust the amount of light that actually comes through um, the light source and onto your sample. Um, towards the back of the microscope, you have um, the two focusing knobs. So there are two different kinds. There's the coarse focus, which is this big knob, and the fine focus, which is this small little knob. OK, now I'm going to be telling you a little bit about how to actually um, use the microscope. So after removing it from its cubby, um, the first thing you can do is go ahead and plug in the microscope. And you want to make sure that um, the objective lenses are set to um, this number four objective lens. And the reason why you want to do this is because when you go ahead and put your slide on, um, if, if one of the longer lenses is down, you might actually damage your slide. So it's important that when you first start that the number four lens is pointing down. Another thing you want to do is you want to have a look at this sliding switch. So this switch again controls the amount of light that's actually coming through the light source. So um, if, if it's turned way up, so you have the maximum amount of light coming through, when you go ahead and turn on the light, the actual scope, and you look through the um, ocular lenses, you might actually hurt your eyes. So you want to start with this on the lowest setting. Okay, so after you've ensured that um, the shortest objective lens is pointing down and that the light source is on its lowest, you can go ahead and turn the scope on. And you'll notice that no light is coming through, so you can go ahead and just slowly start to move this up until you see um, a low amount of light um, coming through the light source. So as we all know, everybody's face and eyes are a little bit different. So some people's eyes are really close together, other people have very spread apart eyes. And so people who have designed the microscope have accounted for this in that you can adjust this interocular distance here. So to do this, what you want to do is you just kind of want to stick your face towards the microscope and look with both eyes until you can kind of see um, straight down through both lenses. Um, down to the bottom. And then you can make note of what number it's set at. There's a little number with a little arrow. So you can um, keep a record of that so you can just adjust that in the future. OK, so when you're focusing on your specimen, the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and take a look down in your microscope and then close your left eye. And then um, using the coarse focus, so this big knob, you can go ahead and just um, 
start to turn it so that the stage comes up and your specimen's getting closer until you actually see um, your specimen on your slide. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and switch over to using the fine focus, which will move the um, objective lenses um, in smaller increments until you can focus on your sample um, and make it a bit more fine. You can go ahead and open up your left eye and close your right eye. And on the left ocular lens is another set of sort of focus knobs. So you go ahead with your right eye closed and just rotate it until you see a nice crisp image that you're happy with. So after you've gone ahead and focused in on your sample, the next thing you want to do is um, adjust your condenser lens. So the condenser knob is located on the left side of the microscope right in front of the coarse and fine focus. And what you want to do is you want to turn it away from you until the condenser lens is all the way at the top, right up against your slide. And then you go ahead and look through the ocular lenses with both eyes, and you can rotate the knob slowly towards you. Um, and what's, what it's going to do is it's going to start to move the condenser lens away from you. And what we're actually doing here is we're actually messing around with the, um, like how the light is being focused on your sample. So when you're looking through the scope and rotating the knob towards you, what you'll notice is that your image is going to become very grainy, and then all of a sudden it's going to become very clear. And once it becomes clear, um, you can just stop what you're doing and you've set your condenser lens. After you've focused on your image, you can go ahead and rotate up um, to the next highest power objective lens. And you don't want to touch your coarse focus knob at this point. You only want to use your fine focus. So you can go ahead and again readjust using the fine focus until you find a nice crisp image. And then if needed, you can go ahead and rotate up to the 40x objective lens and again using only the fine focus knob, um, adjust accordingly to your specimen. Underneath the revolving turret um, is this little circular piece called the iris. And what it does is that it controls um, the amount of light that's shining onto your sample. So to adjust the iris, the first thing you want to do is you want to take the lever and turn it all the way to the right, which will actually close the iris. And then, while looking through the objective lens, you can slowly start to move the lever off to the left. And what this is going to do is it's going to increase the amount of light that's shining on your specimen. And while looking through the ocular lens, what you want to do is you want to um, move the lever until the ring of light that you're seeing through the ocular lens is as large as the field of view that you're looking at. At some point during the semester, you may have to use a microscope to look at a transparent object. And to do that, you want to take advantage of the phase contrast optics um, built into this scope. And so in order to do that, after you've focused using your coarse and fine focus and you've, um, you've adjusted your condenser lens, what you want to do is, um, is you're going to adjust the phase optics using um, what we call a revolving turret. So um, what you'll notice along the revolving turret is that there are different numbers. And um, what you need to know about this is that these numbers must match the number on your objective lens. Um, but one thing you might actually notice at first is that there actually is no number 4. So when you have your 4x objective lens, what you want to do is just pretend that this 0 actually says 4 and you can leave it on 0. As you rotate up to the 10x objective lens, you want to rotate the revolving turret until it says 10. And then if you go up to the 40, you want to rotate this around. Um, until it says 40. What phase optics allows you to do is it allows you to take advantage of the differences in density between your, your sample and the liquid that it's in. So it essentially allows you to look at otherwise invisible structures within your sample. So when turning off the scope, the first thing you want to do is you want to um, shift the objective lenses back down to the 4x objective lens. And this is so when you go ahead and remove the, um, the slide, you're not going to actually either damage your slide or also you won't damage the lenses. So you can go ahead and take your slide off and then what you want to do is you want to go back to this um, the sliding knob and turn it all the way back down to the lowest light source so that you don't um, destroy the next student's eyes. And then um, you can go ahead and flip the switch to off. And then you can go ahead and unplug the scope and you just wrap it around 
wrap the plug around the scope and then put the cover over it. Imagine there's a cover coming over the scope. And then go ahead and lift up the scope again using the arm piece and supporting the base. And you can go ahead and put it into the cover.